Hey everyone, welcome to our integration by parts practice problem video. So we have a couple of problems. We'll do a mix of both integration by parts and tabular integration. So they're both the same, fundamentally the same idea, but I do want to get you comfortable uh, doing both. So we'll be doing both in this video. Uh, and here's my spiel on how to best use this video. Um, try each problem on your own. As always with these practice problem videos, they're there for you to really engage, not just watch. So make sure you're engaging. Check the solutions, of course. We'll have timestamps for all of those. Make sure you've understood each aspect of the problem. Sometimes I'll go into tips and tricks for problem solving and for sol taking integrals at large. Um, so that's also something that you might find helpful. Uh, use a table of contents to navigate. Um, there's also one source that I, I use to help me like sort of write some of these problems. And uh, that source is in the description. So that's another great resource for some extra practice uh, if you need it. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a quick reminder of what makes a good choice for you and what makes a good choice for a DV, because that is going to be very important for these problems. Good choices for you, remember, things that simplify when you differentiate. So these usually tend to be, you know, uh, polynomials, right? So like x squared, x cubed, uh, etc. Right? Polynomials, when you take derivatives of those, they get very nice and they simplify down. So that's why, so you usually want to choose those to be you if you can. And of course, the other, th other thing is things that you are unable to integrate. So this includes things like, you know, arc sine, for example. Right? These are things that we don't currently know how to integrate. So those are, you, you would want to make sure you choose that as u. Because remember, whatever you choose for dv is you will have to integrate that, right? So if you choose something that you don't know how to integrate for dv, uh, you're, you're asking for trouble. So if you don't know how to integrate it, best to choose it as u. And for choices for dv, well, you want to pick things ideally that remain simple when you integrate them. And we talked about three uh, telltale characters in this, right? So we have e to the x, sine of x, and cosine of x. And these three work very nice as a choice for dv because no matter how many integrals you take of them, you, they don't get much more complicated, right? Because the integral of e to the x is itself, integral of sine of x and cosine of x, they're just each other, of course, uh, be mindful of the sine when you're taking uh, integrals of sine and cosine because you do have an alternating sine there. Uh, but besides that, they're actually quite nice. You don't get anything more complicated. So ideally, this is your, your framework that you should have for deciding to choose uh, u or dv. There's a little shortcut that we also talked about called islet, right? So inverse log algebraic trig exponential. Further up this list you go, the better the choice for u. Lower down this list you go, the better choice for dv, right? But again, this is just you know, a shortcut, right? Don't memorize this and try to fit this to every problem. Focus on this underlying logic here that we've talked about, and that'll, I think, serve you better in the long run. This highlight is more just like a short, like if you want a quick, like, you know, memory grasp just for uh, for quickly deciding on what might be a good choice. But this should be your fundamental structure because that's this is really where the, all this comes from, right? So that's it for, that's, that's all I'm gonna say on this. Let's go ahead and solve some problems. All right, first example here, 4x cosine of x dx. We'll do this using the regular integration by parts method. So to start, I'd like you to take a second, pause this video, and see if you can figure out what the optimal choice is for u and what the optimal choice is for dv. And if you could also go ahead and comment those down on this on this video here. So I'll take a second to I'll give you a second to do that. So I hope you've you've got your choices ready, and I'm gonna give you the answer now. It's gonna be u is gonna be uh, 4x and dv is going to be cosine of x dx. Why this choice? Well, again, if we choose u as 4x, when we take a derivative of u, it's going to simplify down. But when we choose cosine of x as dv, and we take an integral of that, it doesn't get very complicated. It just becomes, uh, it just becomes sine of x. If we were to choose 4x as our dv, then we took an integral of that we get 2x squared, which becomes more complicated to deal with. And that's not that's something we want to avoid. So that's why we have this, this specific choice here. So I hope you have that down. All right, so now let's go ahead into our next step. Let's take, let's find our du and v. So du is just going to be 4dx. Again, like we discussed, something very, this is very nice. v, we just take an integral of this, it's just going to be sine of x, right? Again, both these, very nice. And now all we're gonna do is just invoke our formula now. So we have uv minus integral of v du. So we have 4x 
sine of x minus the integral of v du. So we have sine of x times 4 dx. Pretty nice. And now this integral actually works out very nicely. We can bring this 4 up front, and then we just have the integral of sine of x dx, which comes out to negative cosine. So let's put this all together. So we have 4x sine of x. This negative sign will actually cancel with this other negative sign that comes from this, this integral. So we can actually just make that a plus 4 cosine of x dx. Oh, no, do we, no dx, my apologies. <laughs> There's no dx there. Uh, plus c. And that right there is our final answer. Right? And the, we have a plus here because the integral of sine of x is negative cosine. The negative, the negative from that negative cosine cancels out with this negative. So we have a plus for cosine of x. Anyways, so that's our final answer. And let's move on to the next problem. All right, next example here. So we have the integral of x cubed e to the x dx. Now, you, would, you might correctly observe that this would actually be a problem where we need to do integration by parts multiple times, right? Because if we were to do the way these things work, if we made this our u, we would, it would be several steps before we actually got to a point where, we have a, where this would become a constant and we would be able to finally evaluate that last integral. That's very messy. And so instead, for this particular example, we're going to use uh, in, we're going to use tabular integration because that that's perfectly designed to help us efficiently work problems like problems like this. So let's go ahead and do that. But we'll still need to start by finding u and dv. So once again, take a second, pause the video if you need to, and just think about what's a good choice for u and what's a good choice for dv. So hopefully you found that u is equal to x cubed and dv is just going to be e to the x dx. Once again, you know, we choose a u is x cubed is a good choice for u because you, we, we're taking more derivatives and x cubed is going to get simpler. As for dv, e to the x is a great choice for dv because no matter how many integrals we take of it, it doesn't get any more complicated. So that's great. And likewise, we again, we don't want to integrate x cubed because that would become x, x to the fourth over four more complicated, which we, we don't want. So that's that. That's that's the logic behind this choice. And now we can just go right into our di table, right? We probably won't need all of the space, but it's there. So we'll put um, x cubed on the d column and e to the x on the i column. Now for these kinds of problems, I like to do the d column until we get zero here and then just fill up the i after. So let's do that. So we have x cubed to the x squared 6x, just taking derivatives here, 6 and 0, works out very nicely. And again, the beautiful thing about e to the x is its own integral. So we can just literally fill this entire column with e to the x's. So we have e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, and e to the x. So really, really nice there. And now we can go ahead and put our signs in. So again, we have to draw the arrow. And the first one, again, is going to be a positive. Next one is going to be negative, and we alternate like that. Yeah. Negative. Okay. And now we just have to write this and multiply down the arrows and just write our final answer. So this is going to we're going to get x cubed e to the x minus 3x squared e to the x plus 6x e to the x minus 6e to the x uh, plus c. That right there is your final answer. All right, next example. So this one is actually really cool because we actually get to derive the integral of arctangent. And it's a lot of fun to derive these things, for me at least, just because you can, uh, it really helps you, you know, apply the steps and also like gives you more confidence as opposed to just memorizing these things. So this one is actually going to be pretty cool. So once again, we'll do this one using the traditional integration by parts method. So, but anyways, anyways, take a second and see if we can figure out what a good choice will be for you and what a good choice would be for dv. So I'll give you a second to figure that out. And let's go ahead and do this now. So I hope you found that u is equal to inverse tangent of x. 
And it really just makes sense because, again, we don't really, you know, there's nothing else. We can't really make inverse tangent of x dv because that's literally what we're trying to find. We can't integrate that. So it's obvious that's the obvious choice for u. But the choice for dv might be a little bit more interesting because it's a little bit unorthodox. Because, well, there's nothing else in this integral, right? Seemingly nothing else in this integral. Because really what we have is we can assume this is being inverse tangent of x times 1. Right? Because that's basically, anything is basically itself times 1. So we can call dv to be 1. Right? We can take the 1 that's multiplied to inverse tangent and make it our dv. Totally fine. So now we can go ahead and, and just go to our next step to find du and v. So du, remember the derivative of inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. dv, when we integrate that, we get v is equal to x. Yes, that is becoming more complicated, and I know we don't like that, generally speaking, but in this particular case, it's unavoidable, right? Because uh, we had to choose u as an inverse tangent as u. Uh, we couldn't choose that as dv, so we had to make this thing more complicated. Unavoidable, but in the end, it actually works out quite nice, so it'll, it'll be okay. So now, let's go ahead and put this all together. So we have uv, so we have um, I'm going to make it this x inverse tangent, so v times u, but it's the same thing. x inverse tangent of x minus the integral of v du. So we have x times, or no, that should be in red, my apologies. So we have x times du, so this 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, yeah? And so here, this part is done, but for this, this is actually going to be a u substitution integral, right? Because we have x over 1 plus x squared, this is going to be a u substitution integral. So we'll, and we'll do this in green, just so that we don't confuse this u with, with this the u from this, this substitution. So we'll have um, u, maybe... So we'll have u equals, um, in this case, it's going to be 1 plus x squared. Uh, so we have du is going to be 2x dx, and dx is equal to du over 2x. And now it's just standard. We plug this all in. We can bring this 1 half up front, and so what we'll have is we'll have x inverse tangent x minus one half is the integral of x over u. I don't know. Maybe we should do that in green. Over u times du over x because we've already brought the one half up front here. Of course, this x and this x will just cancel. So what we're left with here is going to be the integral of one over u du which we've established is just going to be ln of absolute value of u. So what we'll have here is going to be x inverse tangent of x minus one half ln of u plus c. But we're not quite done, right? Because we can't have x, we can't have u's here since we started with x, we need to end with x. So plugging back in, our final answer is going to be x inverse tangent of x minus one half ln of, well, this was our choice for you, uh, one plus x squared plus c. And that right there is our final, oops. And that right there is our final answer. Yeah. That's a pretty nice one too. So it's, it's an ugly integral, but the process was actually a lot smoother than you might think. So that's, that's that. So let's go on to our next example now. All right, new problem. So here, we're going to be looking at uh, another in tab tabular integration problem. So, and again, the reason we're doing tabular as opposed to regular is because, well, this x minus one to the fourth is promising to, be, to make this problem a little bit ugly. So we'll have a lot of steps of a regular integration by parts and that will be they'll take a lot of time for us to sift through so tabular integration will allow us to streamline this a lot more cleanly so 
Once again though, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna ask you to choose something for you and to choose something for DV. And uh, so I hope you take a second to do that. And so the correct answers are gonna be u is equal to x minus one to the fourth and dv is gonna equal cosine of two x. Again, we, we've talked about the logic for this choice. It's nothing different than what we've talked about before. Uh, we don't wanna integrate this. We do like different, we, we do like integrating this. We wanna differentiate that, we don't wanna integrate it. So pretty standard stuff. And now we're gonna go ahead and put this into our di table. This one might get a little messy, so we'll draw it a little longer. So we have our D and I. So we're gonna put this guy, of course, in the D D column, to take, take derivatives. And we'll put this other guy in the I column. So repeatedly taking derivatives of this. So again, like for these kinds of situations, I'm just gonna keep taking derivatives of this until it goes to zero. And then we'll come over here and I'll fill out the I column. So here our first derivative is gonna just be four x minus one cubed, no need to follow this out. Next one, we're gonna have four times three, which is 12 x minus one squared. Then we have 24 x minus one, just x minus one. Um, and now the derivative of this, well, we, we can do the foiling in our heads. This is the same thing as uh, 24 x minus 24. So derivative of that is just gonna be 24. Yeah. And then the derivative of that is gonna be zero. And now we can do the same, we can start integrating on the cosine side. So the integral of cosine uh, is, we're gonna, the, in, the integral of cosine two x is gonna be one half positive sine of two x. And be mindful of the one half that comes because of the, the two x in here. Integral of that is gonna be minus one fourth cosine 2x. Integral of that, it's still going to be negative. We'll have 1 8th sine of 2x. And now we will switch back to positive. So we'll have negative, we'll have positive 1 over 16 cosine of 2x. And then uh, we'll stay we'll stay positive here, so we'll have one over thirty two um, sine of two x. Okay, so that's our di table, and now we just go ahead, draw our lines, put our signs in, multiply, and we'll be done. So first one is going to be positive. This one is going to be negative. This one is going to be positive. This one's going to be negative. That uh, one's gonna be positive. And while we're doing this, we're gonna keep an eye out for things that might cancel, because as you can see, we have a lot of fractions here, we have a lot of whole numbers here. Let's see if there's anything that might uh, cancel out nicely. The first term though is gonna be pretty standard, so we're gonna have one half x minus one to the fourth times sine of two x. Um, this is gonna get pretty long, minus or actually it's gonna be plus because the minus sign from this is gonna cancel with the minus sign of that. And this four over here is also gonna cancel with that one fourth over there. So we're actually just gonna have plus x minus one cubed cosine of two x, okay? And then over here we have a minus sign from that. So it's actually gonna be negative. 12 over eight is just gonna be, is the same thing as uh, three halves. So we'll have um, three halves x minus one squared sine of two x. Okay. And for this one, we're gonna it's gonna be negative as well. So uh, twenty four over sixteen is gonna be again three halves actually. It's eight times three is twenty four. Eight times two is sixteen. So we'll have minus three halves. Um, x minus one cosine of two x. You could probably follow that out if you wanted to, but there's no reason to. Um, 
And then for this last one here, it's going to be positive. So we'll have plus 24 over 32 is actually going to be 3 fourths. Because again, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, uh, sine of 2x. Plus c. And that right there is going to be our final answer. And once again, this really makes you appreciate um, tabular integration, right? Because this answer looks uh, complicated enough just to write down. Uh, to actually sift through, sit through the actual the regular steps of tabular of integration by parts for this entire problem would be a pretty long process. So that's why tabular integration is is really nice and a really useful weapon to have when tackling problems like this, which require multiple iterations of integration by parts. Uh, let me just that two should be closer. Let's just move that over here. Cool, looks good. So that's our final answer, and let's move on to the next problem. All right, new problem. So this one is pretty interesting. It'll have a really cool twist towards the end, uh, but let's go ahead and get started anyways. So again, figure out what would be a good choice for U and what would be a good choice for DV. As it turns out for this problem, it doesn't matter what you choose for U and what you choose for DV, because both of these are very easy to integrate and very easy to take derivatives of. Uh, you could choose either for U and either for DV. I'm gonna choose U equals E to the two X and I'm going to choose dv to equal sine of x over 3 dx. The reason I'm doing this is because this allows me to only work with whole numbers. Because if I were to choose sine of x over 3 as u, then I would have to keep multiplying by one third every time I took a derivative of it. But now I get to, when I take an integral of sine, I get to multiply by 3 instead of, instead of uh, multiply by a third because I'm dividing by that one third. So I get to work with just whole numbers here. So that's really nice. So let's find du and v. So du is equal to 2e to the 2x. And v is just going to be, well, uh, integral of sine is going to be negative, co integral of sine is negative cosine. So we will have, um, we'll have negative 3 cosine of x over 3. So as you can see, we're just working with the whole numbers here. We don't have any fractions. So that's very nice. Plug this into the formula. So we'll have, um, maybe let's work a little bit higher this time. So we have uh, uv, so we'll have e to the 2x times minus 3 cosine x over 3 minus v du, so we'll have minus the integral of v is going to be minus 3 cosine of x over 3 times du, so that's going to be times 2e to the 2x and, oops, we forgot our dx there, uh, dx, right? So for this particular integral, we're going to have to do integration by parts again, right? But before we do that, Let's go ahead and factor out all these constants just so we can make this look a little nicer. So we'll have uh, minus 3 e to the 2x cosine of x over 3. Also, this minus sign and that minus sign will cancel. So we'll just have a plus integral of, well, 3 times 2 is 6. So we'll have a 6 up front. Integral of, uh, getting a little crammed there, but e to the x cosine x over 3 dx. Okay, super. And now we're going to do integration by parts again on on this guy here. Once again, I'm going to choose uh, u equals e to the, oh, that should be e to the 2x, my apologies. That should be e to the 2x. Once again, I'm going to choose e to the 2x as u and so we can also just do du right on the spot is going to be 2e to the 2x just like last time and for dv once again i'm going to choose the trig function i'm going to choose dv is equal to cosine x over 3 um, dx if i take an integral of that i'm going to get a positive i'm going to get v is equal to a positive 3 sine of x over 3 and again, once again, uh, you can kind of see when I integrate, I get the whole number, which works out nicely. So let's go ahead and put this all together now. It's getting a little messy, so I apologize for that. So we still have the piece from the previous part. So we still have minus 3 
e to the 2x cosine x over 3 plus and we have a 6 times all of this so we have uv so uv is going to, so we have a 6 times all of that so we're going to have e to the 2x times uh, 3 sine of 3 x over 3 minus the integral of v du which is going to be uh, this so we have 3 sine x over 3 times 2e to the 2x dx and now in this position you might think oh no we need to do integration by parts again and Let's, before we get too hasty, let's just do one quick step and just go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to distribute the 6 to each of these terms. I'm also going to factor out another 6 from here. So because we have 2 times 3, I'm going to factor that out and then distribute this 6 just so we have something a little bit cleaner to work with. And then we'll, we'll talk after that. So we have um, still have minus 3e to the 2x cosine x over 3 plus uh, we'll have 18 e to the x, uh, 2x, excuse me, 2x sine of x over 3. Um, again, 3 times 2 is going to be 6, so we have minus um, 6 times 6, we're going to have 36, which is the integral of e to the 2x sine of x over 3 dx. Now, what's super interesting here is that, now you'll agree that what I'm doing over here can be set equal to this original integral, right? Let's maybe just call this i, just because uh, we're running out of space here. So we're going to call this i. And you'll agree that whatever I'm doing here can be set equal to my original integral, or i. Watch this. This right here that we've got is exactly the same thing as my original integral. That's also i, right? So what I can do, I can treat it like, I can just treat i like another variable. I can add this over to that side and then divide by 36 and then I'll have my answer, right? So let's go ahead and do that, right? Because I have this, so let's go ahead and do that. So my final answer, is actually going to be actually it's going to be 37 not 36 so we'll have 1 over 36 or 37 excuse me <laughs> 1 over 37 negative 3e to the 2x cosine x over 3 plus 18 e to the 2x sine of x over 3 plus c that right there is going to be your final answer. I know it looks kind of weird, like we just suddenly were able to do it, but here's what really happened. We did integration by parts once, we did it again, and because of the nature of the sine, uh, the way sine of x oscillates between sine and cosine, I actually got the same integral back in the second step here. When I did integration by parts twice, I actually got the second integral back here. So because of that, I was able to just add this over to the other side of the equation here. So I could basically, I added 36i to this side and 36i to this side. So I have 37i on this side is equal to all of this. And so to solve for my original integral, I now just divide it by 37. I'm sorry if that doesn't look super clear. It's just, I'm really out of space here. But uh, that's the idea of what's going on. And this is, a, this is the twist. This is a really interesting twist. That's what we were talking about in the beginning. Um, that occurs in this kind of problem. So whenever you see e to the x times sine of x and in an integration by parts integral, integral, be on the lookout for this, right? Don't keep doing integration by parts after this because after the, otherwise you're gonna keep, keep going forever. St when you see this integral repeat, stop, add it over to that side and you're done. Just divide by whatever's necessary and we're done. So that's basically the gist of this problem. Now the next example, which we'll see in just a second, we'll do something similar, but we'll use the tabular integration to get this done. 
All right, so as promised, we're looking at a very similar problem to the previous example in this, in this example. Uh, and we're going to be doing this using tabular integration, just like we mentioned. So, however, we will need to do tabular integration just a little bit differently for this particular example. So to make sure that we don't get you know, too lost, I've just simplified this problem a little bit more. So I've removed all the coefficients. We're just dealing with the raw e of x times sine of x. Hopefully, that'll make this a little bit easier for you to follow as well. So anyways, let's go down in and start with our first step, to which is choosing u and dv. So like with the previous example, it doesn't matter what we choose for u, what we choose for dv, because like we talked about, both these are easy to integrate, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to choose u equals sine of x this time. And that's just personal preference. And I'm going to choose dv is equal to e to the x dx. Again, just personal preference. If you switch these, that's completely fine. There's no advantage to choosing one over the other. And now we're going to go ahead and set up our di table. Now we're going to need to do things just a little bit differently here. So we can't just go do one column until it goes to zero and then do the next one, like in the previous examples. We're going to do them simultaneously. And I'll tell you what to look out for in just a second. So we'll, let's just put everything in. So we have sine of x e to the x. Now you see that because we were starting this e to the x times sine of x integral, we have e to the x and sine of x in the same row. That represents that the integral that we're taking is the integral of e to the x times sine of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep doing derivatives of this column and integrals of this column until we see this sine of x and e to the x in the same row, right? So we're going to we're going to keep doing this until we see e to the x and sine of x in the same row. It doesn't matter what they're multiplied to. We just need to see them in the same row, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. So derivative of sine of x, of course, is just cosine of x. Derivative of e to the x, of course, is just you know, e to the x. Derivative of cosine of x is going to be negative sine of x. And derivative of e and integral of e to the x is e to the x. And now you can see we have a sine of x and e to the x in the same row. So that tells us that all right, in this particular step here, we are evaluating the integral of e to the x times sine of x here. Right? That's what this is. What Worth is telling us is that in this step we have the integral of, in this case, negative e to the x sine of x. And that's what we want because. That's what we want, because like in the previous example, we want this integral, this original integral to repeat, because that allows us to make that uh, that substitute, that cancellation that we saw last time. All right. So now that we have this, we are we're good to go. So we're going to just like normal, we're going to go ahead and draw these arrows with the signs. The only difference is going to be at the end, we're just going to append this integral. All right. So what we'll have is well, we'll have um, e to the x sine of x minus e to the x cosine of x minus, and now we just tag on the integral here. So we tag on the integral of e to the x sine of x. And we know that all of this, let me actually just erase a little bit here just so that we have some room. We know that all of this is going to be equal to our original integral or the integral of e to the x sine of x. Right? If you like, we can rewrite this calling this integral as i. So for example, we'd have uh, e to the x sine of x minus uh, e to the x cosine of x minus i equals i. Right, substituting this original integral as i, that's what we have. And now it's just a matter of adding e to the i over to that side, dividing by 2. So our final answer would be that i, or this original integral, is equal to 1 half e to the x sine of x minus e to the x cosine of x. Okay, and that right there is your final answer. Oops. 
It's really lovely how this problem works out so cleanly, even though it looks like it's going to be a monster of a problem with several integration by part steps, but it works out quite nicely. And so now just before we wrap this problem up, I just want to do a quick recap. So again, we start with sign of, we start with a regular uh, in tabular integration method. So we just go like this, we get our first terms on there. But as soon as we see our original, the terms of our original integral in the same row, that is in this case, sine of x and e to the x in the same row, we stop, do the first terms as normal, like we did here, and then tag on this integral at the end here. And the reason we know that this integral is what's happening is because, well, that's how we started, right? The first line here is e to the x sine of x, uh, and that's because we are integrating e to the x times sine of x. So that's basically where this comes from. So that's basically it for this example. Um, let's go on to our final example for this video. All right, so this has been a pretty long video. The last two examples in particular were, were pretty challenging. So we're gonna end this video with something pretty nice and something pretty light. So we're gonna look at the integral of ln of x dx. I promise this is not an ugly integral. It actually works out really nicely and it's a nice fun derivation for us to do. So because you've worked so hard to get to the end of this video, I'm actually just going to give you what u and dv are for this problem. So I'm going to say, so u is just going to be ln of x, and dv is going to be 1 dx. Just like we saw in the inverse tangent video, we can just we can just use 1 as our dx, because again, we need ln of x to be u, because we are literally trying, we, we can't make that dv, because that's literally what we're trying to integrate. So we make one our, our dv, and you could have just written dv is equal to dx, but you know I just wanted to emphasize that this is one that we're choosing as dv. Moving on to our next steps, so du, well, remember that the derivative of ln of x is one over x, so we just have one over x dx here. Integral of v, one, dv, once again, we're gonna get integral of one is just gonna be x, so we have v equals x, and then we just plug this into the formula. So we have uv, so we're going to have x times ln of x. I, get that, I guess that's v times u, but it makes no difference. Minus the integral of v du. So we have x times 1 over x dx. So when I said this is a really nice integral, I promise I was not joking, and you can really see that here. So this x cancels with this, so all this is, is just the integral of 1 dx. And so if we do this out, our final answer comes out to a really, really lovely x ln of x minus x plus c. And that's basically it. That's our final answer. And if you don't believe me that this integral is this easy, try taking a derivative of that. The product rule actually works out really beautifully. So you actually end up with just ln of x. So that brings a really sweet end to what's been a very long and tiresome video. Uh, if you've watched this far, many congratulations. You have my respect. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Hopefully you have a much stronger understanding of integration by parts now. So yeah, I hope this, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.